if you are a center forward and you want to be the man, you want to be the guy, the guy that carries the responsibility, you have to have an obsession with scoring goals. You have to have a hunger with scoring goals. It, it has to be your whole life becomes about scoring goals and putting yourself in a position where you can do that game in and game out. Uh, as a striker, Erling Haaland would suggest, as, as we have seen in the very short term of period of time that we have seen him in, in the big stage, that that is his priority. And he puts himself in a position when he can do that with consistency. In terms of his ability to score goals, I think the, the most impressive thing about it is that there's variety to the ways that he has scored those goals. He can score the tapping, but he can also, also score the the shot from the top of the 18-yard box. He can run away from people. He can run around defenders. He can get around goalkeepers. And so there's a lot about Erling Haaland that you have to like. But most of all, you have to enjoy and, and appreciate the fact that when he's talking about scoring goals, his eyes light up. When he's talking about scoring goals, it becomes very much part of second nature. It, it, it is what drives him. It is what, what he feels is the most important part about his game. And that, if you're a Borussia Dortmund fan, you have to love. Most definitely. We hear some bland interviews, don't we, Frank, where players just kind of going through the motions. But you can see when Alexis is talking about the goals, talking about trying to emulate Ronaldo and Zlatan with that attitude, he's very much on the same page. He is, and, uh, and, and I like him because you can't say that he has a specific talent, but he seems to have everything. And, uh, and most of the thing is he has the thoughts. He, he feels football, he eats football, he drinks and sleeps football. We can feel that he understood everything about football, the way that he has to work with his teammates, the way, the way uh, he has to become selfish, as Alejandro uh, said and explained before, about scoring goals and, uh, and getting the right examples with Latan and Cristiano. That guy has everything to become the best striker in the world, that's for sure. Uh, of course, currently number eight in our list, according to Tor Christian Carlson. Uh, he's put him down there. He said that just he needs more experience at a big club to make it higher up the list, which is topped by Kylian Mbappé. And as we discussed yesterday, uh, Jaden Sancho there as well as Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, Ali, what I liked about it, he seemed pretty genuinely annoyed that he was eighth. And he should be annoyed because... This game that we love to watch and play and that has been part of our lives forever and ever is about scoring goals. And he has proven that he can do that. He did it at Salzburg and now he's doing it at Dortmund. And there was there were people that thought, OK, you know, what's his transition going to be like when he goes from Salzburg and takes the jump up to Dortmund? Maybe he's going to have to take some time to kind of get used to the Bundesliga. Ah, uh, yeah, not so much. He's scoring goals there right away. And... and and then you think, well, maybe he's not quite ready to take that jump now to Champions League. Oh, no, no. He went and scored goals there as well. And so when I hear people say things like, well, maybe he's going to have to work on his heading. Because there's an expectation that if you're a tall guy, you have to be a great header of the ball. Well, I could turn, the, turn that around and say, wait, wait a minute. He's doing things that you expect little guys to be doing. And he, with his side, he's doing it naturally. You can teach somebody to head the ball, but you cannot teach people instincts. And he has instincts. And there's going to be a maturity and a growth process that he's going to go through that's going to make him even better and stronger as a player. Not only physically, but in the mindset as he approaches bigger and bigger games. He's only going to get better. His ceiling is so much higher than everybody else's. And, 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 and I have to say, eighth in this list is way, and I mean way too low for Erling Haaland. He is among the very best in that age group. Uh, Delic, Donnarumma, Vinicius Jr., all above him. Where would you have him, Ali? I would have him above Vinicius Jr. Because I can have tricky guys down the wing that take people on in one-on-one -on -one situations. And those are guys that, yeah, they're good to have in a team. They can make a difference for you. But you need to score goals in order to win games. And natural goal scorers, they're hard to come by. Truly natural goal scorers, those, those are generational talents. And if, if this guy continues in the path that we have seen him and continues to trend in the direction that we have seen him, then he becomes, as Frank alluded earlier, perhaps the best in the world. And if you're the best striker in the world, that's the guy that you want to have on your team. Frank, where would you put him on this list? 
Well, I would say that except Kylian Mbappe, because of uh, more experience, uh, more games, uh, maybe more talent, I will put him in the second place. Um, I'm, I'm, at first I said, okay, he's young, he's maybe like a, a newborn baby, six months year old for the uh, uh, soccer fans, so we didn't see him a lot playing. Uh, and he just came from Austria to, uh, to, uh, to Germany. Uh, he, plays, he plays in Bundesliga, he doesn't play in the Premier League, so maybe it's normal. And then I look at the ranking and I see uh, a goalkeeper, Donnarumma, fantastic goalkeeper, is going to be maybe at Chelsea or maybe in Paris Saint-Germain next year. But I, I think I saw more Alan and I, uh, and than Donnarumma. Then I see Averst playing for Leverkusen, didn't play in the Champions League. Um, very strange. And I see, for me, uh, surprisingly, uh, Sancho being second when i compare the two players because then you can compare they play almost same place at front let's say they play for the same club they play this normally the same amount of game but no alan played more than Jenden, and and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, erling played uh, was more effective than, than than this player so how come in the world it can be behind him Sancho is a fantastic player, he has the talent, he, he might go uh, so somewhere else ne uh, next season. But can you compare Alan with the impact he made lately with any other player but maybe Mbappe? That's the question I ask. The others do don't count. Uh, last... It's just Alan is the man. <laughs> <laughs> Last word then on this, Frank. Uh, he said that he wasn't bothered about the meditation celebration being uh, imitated. Yeah, it, it, he starts to have some experience, you know, about talking. <laughs> uh, he, he knows that it was a uh, the, the player, Paris Saint Germain player, were teasing him, and he turned that to his advantage, and that, that's very clever. And I'm very pleased. I'm a Buddhist, and I and I meditate as well, so I'm very pleased that uh, it's becoming a, a kind of a fashion movement to to do after scoring a goal. So I encourage everybody to do that. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.